Good morning, church. How are we all this morning? Um, as you may have noticed, I'm not standing at the pulpit. Um, the reason for that being, I recently just tested positive for, for COVID, um, along with the rest of my family. So currently, all isolating at home. Um, by the grace of God, I'm here with you this morning um, from my house with the word of God. Um, I've been asked by Pastor Alan to share, just to say, share a little bit about my vision for the church and for, for worship in the church. Um, so this morning I've entitled the, the, the name of the talk, uh, Worship in Unity, Worship in Unity. <clears throat> so before we, before we get into it, I'm just going to read the psalm. So Psalm 107, verses 1 and 2. It says, Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this. So, what we're going to do this morning, I'm going to read that again and leave a little pause at the end and you can repeat after me what I've just said. So the same verse again. Let's give it a go. Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. His love endures forever. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you are good and I thank you that your love endures forever, Lord. And I thank you this morning for your word. And as we read and look into the scriptures and look at the word that you've given us as a church, Lord, I pray that you will bless it to us and help us to just help it to be relevant for everyone that's listening this morning. In Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. So, where to start really? Um, I was asked around about August, sometime in August, towards the end of August last year, about being the worship leader for, for Whitford Christian Centre. How did I feel when I was asked? Um, excited, that was the first thing. I mean, um, I love to serve, I've been in worship for a long time, I've played my guitar in the church for a long time. Um, but it's, it's obviously different um, leading leading the worship team. I think first and foremost, albeit that I love playing the guitar, it's not for my personal pleasure, but for, for the glory of God. That's the first thing. Um, but yeah, really excited. Um, obviously looking forward to, to a challenge as well. Um, I was also a bit worried, taking over from other people. Um, you know, I didn't want to put anyone's noses out of joint. Um, obviously, people that had in the past been um, sort of leading the team, people and persons that have been leading the team, I didn't want to sort of upset anyone. I think that was that was the, the other thing that I had. Um, but I, you know, having spoke to, to several people um, within the group, that I have got their blessing, which is fantastic. You know, I've got their blessing in in the role of of the worship leader. Um, I was scared. I can say I was scared. I was scared that I was not going to be good enough. That I was going to mess up. That I wasn't going to do a very good job because ultimately this is for the glory of God. And I, um, you know, it's not just like turning up and playing my guitar. As I said, I'm now leading the team. So um, it's a very, very different sort of a role. I mean, I just used to turn up to practice and, you know, obviously enjoy worshiping and praising God, but I didn't. Had to think about um, anything. I just turned up and, and played my guitar. So it's a it's a different it's a different um, it's a different role. Um, when I'd originally spoke to pastor, he said to me, you know, pray pray for a word from from God, which is what I did. God had given me a word, and the word originally one of the, one of the verses and one of the words that God gave me was Psalm thirty two verse 8 and it says this I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go I will counsel you and watch over you and when it says counsel it, it means like advise so God says I will advise you and watch over you and for me that's a massive thing being scared not wanting to mess up I'm you know I'm pleased that God will instruct me I don't want to be doing this off my own back I'm looking to take God's instruction I'm looking to lead the worship team 
um, based upon God's will, following God's will, for what he wants for us as a team, for what he wants for us as a church. Um, you know, that, that could go down as far as sort of choosing songs, um, you know, on a, on a Sunday morning, maybe new songs that we're going to introduce to the church, whether they're right for the congregation or right for the church. Um, you know, that could be whether we're looking to, you know, maybe modernisation within, um, within the stuff that we're going to do in the church, looking at new technologies and new ways that we can, that we can develop a team. Um, potentially with the music, you know, going digital amongst amongst other things. But this is something that we're looking to take God's instruction from. Looking to, um, you know, I don't. It's, a, it's not about my ideas and about the good ideas that I have, but it's about God's ideas and what God wants us to do. How God wants us to move forward as a team. Um, one of the one of the things that I've read in my readings, I get you know a lot of stuff that I've read in my readings recently has been. You know, it, it's there's quite a few bits in here because it's sort of it's all linked up. Everything that God's telling me has all come together. And one of the things it said in my readings in in the notes that the guy had written, it said, "He doesn't call the qualified; he qualifies the called," which is fantastic because I'm not qualified to be a worship leader technically, but God's called me to do this and to serve Him, and I believe that He will qualify me he will help me to do by his holy spirit what he wants me to do and what he wants the team to do um again another thing that i'd that i'd read in my bible only only a few days ago um it was in acts so acts 19 verse 13 to 16 and this is from the new king james version it says then some the, the itinerant Jew, Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by the Jesus who Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leapt onto them, overpowered them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. So these people had been, you know, had been doing something that was, was well, they, they thought that's what they should be doing. But ultimately, this is not what God was telling them to do. And it's the, one of the notes in the, in the readings itself says, God doesn't empower us to do our own thing. God empowers us to do his thing. And ultimately, this is this is what I'm looking for. Um, I don't want to be there. God's not empowering me to do my thing with how I feel the team should go, how I feel worship in the church should happen. God is empowering me to, to do him, to do his will, to serve him. And much, you know, much like this, this passage that I've just read, I don't want to be like that. I want to, I want God to empower me to do His will, and that's and that's what it's all about. I mean, it says, as I just read there, Psalm chapter thirty-eight, uh, thirty-two, and verse eight. Sorry, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. So I'm looking for God's instruction, God's direction for the team and you know, for the for the church in worship. So one of one of the things, and I'd, I'd sat down with the worship team. Um, and I, I apologise to the worship team members that have, that have heard some of these things that I'm saying, but I'd shared some of these things previously with them about how I felt and what, and what God was saying to me at the time. Um, I'd ask you to turn me in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 to 26. So this talks about one body, many parts. One body and many parts. That says, <clears throat> the body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptised by one spirit into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Now the body is not made up of one part, but many. 
if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? In fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If there were only one part, where would the body be? Sorry, if they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and the parts that we think are less honourable we treat with special honour, and the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honour to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. So there's, there's, so, there's so much in that, and that in itself, I think there's a, a, probably a whole a whole sort of morning sermon on, on that sort of scripture there. But there was just a, a few, a couple of verses that sort of jump out at me. There's, well, there's lots of verses, but the two that I'm going to use this morning. Verse 18. It says, but in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. Just as he wanted them to be. And I think, you know, as, as I was sort of looking um, at how things were, in, in the team, I thought, you know, we've got, you know, fantastic, a fantastic team of people, but there's, you know, there's obviously someone new coming in, maybe different ideas. Um, we had new members of the team, and I didn't want anyone to feel like they were left out. Um, you know, we had some original members of the team that have been there for a long time. I didn't want people to feel like they were being pushed out. Everybody has a part to play, and, I, and it's, this is not just for the worship team at the time, that's, that's what I thought, but this is for everybody in the church. Everybody has a part to play, and it was just as God has put people in the, in the places that he wants them to be in. He wants them to be in those places. It's not me that put them there or anyone else in the church. God has put them there. And secondly, the other, the other verse that, that I've been drawn to, is on the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And, and there must be people, you know, whether that be in the worship team or in the church as a whole, that just feel like, you know, I don't contribute anything, or I'm not good enough. The weak, it's the weaker parts that are indispensable. There's, you know, the support, the support that I get. So when I'm when I'm leading the worship, the, the people that are supporting me whether that be playing a bass guitar or playing a piano, without these different parts of the body, of the of the worship team, it's it's not what it should be. It's not going to be the complete picture. It's not going to be, um, you know, we're not, it's just not really going to be complete. It's not, it doesn't seem right. And I think that's, within, that's the same within the church. I think um, God has combined us and he's put us all together for a reason. And it says about there, there is no division in the body. We all suffer together and we all rejoice together. And that's what it's all about as a church, the body of Christ. And again, like I said, this is not just the worship team, but this is for the whole church. Um, you may not be a musician, um, but that doesn't matter. You may, you may be a good encourager. You may be someone that is able to encourage people and, and just, you know, tell people that they've done a good job and just, Bless them by encouraging them. You may be someone who is a prayer warrior, who just is able just to not not get out and physically do things, but physically able to to, to pray for people and to and just to bring people to the Lord in your in your personal time. You may be a good listener, someone that is able to listen and 
listen to the problems of, of others and just help them in that way. I think, you know, I, I look at my wife and I know that when, when she's on the door at the church, welcoming people, she's better at that than I am, much, much better. She's, well, first of all, she's got a, a, a prettier face than I have. So obviously when people come into the church, I think they'd rather look at her face than look at mine. So that's that's the first thing. But she is just generally good at welcoming people. She's good at just putting a smile on people's face. And I think that's a, that's a very important thing. You know, that's the first person you see on a Sunday morning. You know, you've not even got into the church to to listen to the word or be part of the worship. You've the first person you see on the door is the person that's welcoming you. And if that person makes you feel happy, makes you smile, makes you feel welcome, then that's just as important as me or anybody else leading the worship or anyone else bringing the word of God because you well you feel welcome in God's house. Everybody has a different part to play. We've all got our own parts to play. I remember when we when we first came back into the church, um, sort of last year after the first lockdown, and we weren't allowed to sing, and obviously we were wearing masks. Well, I was allowed to sing leading the worship, which is fantastic. But for me, it was it was strange because I was just singing to to the congregation. Um, sort of for me. I felt a bit like a, a bodiless head, so I'm singing, but there's no one joining in. And I think ultimately, I know, I know that people were worshipping God in their hearts. I know that people were praising God in their hearts, but it was it was difficult. It was, you know, it's lovely just to hear everyone singing, and I can't wait to get back into the church, you know, to hear us all singing with one voice in unity to God. As I said, we've we've been blessed over the you know the last you know since lockdown, since we've come out of lockdown, and since we've started practicing as a worship team again, we've been blessed by you know new members coming into the team, and I thank God for those and and uh, um, the diversity that they bring, and you know the the talents that they bring, and I just I pray that God will bless them too. But at the same time, we've we, we've got other members of the group, and the other members that are in the group, you know, for example, my mum, she knows a lot of hymns, a lot of older hymns. I don't know those hymns. So without my mum and others in the group that know those hymns, you, you would lose something. And I think it's important because a lot of those old hymns are, um, you know, the words are fantastic. The, the songs live long in our memory. And we, you know, we just remember, I remember when I was young, a lot younger singing some of these songs and, and, and praises in church. Um, as a, as a youngster so it, it certainly triggers memories for me as well but I think we don't want to lose that you know everybody has their part to play without that I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to sing and play a lot of these old hymns because I don't know some of them so we you know it's good that we've got this diversity we're blessed we're blessed with it so I've got to get you to turn with me in your bibles to Luke chapter 22 So this is um, this is the Last Supper, and the, the disciples are, are sitting around the table, and they're arguing with one another. In verse twenty-four of chapter twenty-two of Luke says, "A dispute arose among them as to which of them was considered to be greatest." Jesus said to them, "The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them." And those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest. And the one who rules like the one who serves. We are all members of the same body. Many parts, one body. We're all, we're all equal to God in God's eyes. And we're all as important in God's eyes, as each other. We all have a part to play. Matthew chapter 23, verses 11 and 12. Matthew 23, starting at verse 11. It says, The greatest among you will be your servant. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. I think ultimately, 
myself that you know and I speak for the rest of the team we are we are here to serve we are here to serve the church and it's a massive it's a ma massive privilege to be able to to serve the church in leading the worship in praising God in leading the church in that praise it, it's a massive blessing for us um, again this this was another thing this was another thing that I'd, I'd read in my readings and it was just saying about being humbled um, whoever humbles himself will be exalted and it said humility doesn't mean thinking less of yourself it means thinking of yourself less and sometimes sometimes we're all we're guilty of that thinking of ourselves too much in life but it means think it doesn't mean thinking less of yourself it means thinking of yourself less so um i don't know if anyone remembers harmony but harmony um was was set up um sort of in 2013 um I sort of mid 2013 I think and there was myself and a few other members of the church the younger members of the church that um, would we were part of a sort of like a, a youth worship team and we would um, lead the worship and the family service which meant obviously encouraging some of the younger members of the, of the congregation and the children and the youth to be part of the team and lead the worship on a Sunday morning as part of the family service um, the family service was on once a month at the end, end of the month last sunday of the month and we would lead the worship and there'd be some you know a few kids songs a few adult songs but it was all um about including the children but for me i think the children should be included every week i think the children should be included in the worship all the time it you know and i'm not saying that they're not and that they haven't been in the past but i just feel that Every service is a family service. Every service is a service where the children can get involved. And every, you know, I feel that every every service should have the children leading the worship, serving God. And you know, when when the time is right, I think I think that will be something that we look to do to encourage our children, to encourage our youth to to be part, to be more, to be part of that in a in a regular basis. You know. Um, I remember when this is a little football analogy. Apologise for this. Um, when Jurgen Klopp became the Liverpool manager in October 2015, he came into the football club and he looked at the sort of setup of the football club. And you've got the first team that were training in one area, and then you've got the academy that were training in another area. And I think he looked at the way that was set up and decided, you know what, I don't want them training separately, I don't want them working apart, I want them working together. So they built a, a, a multi-purpose training facility that would include the academy and the first team so that they could train together and work together and, and, and just develop as a team together. And I think that's massively important. Um, it's something that's obviously happened in football. And again, I don't, I don't, know the ins and the outs and exactly how things are going to work right now but i just pray to god that he will lead and guide me and in in you know in this area i believe that the children are a massive part and the youth are a massive part of the worship in the church and that is essentially part of what my vision is about including including them more and more and more in the worship team in the worship setup praising and worshipping God in the church, leading the worship in the church. I think it's, it excites me just, you know, that, that we can in, include the, the youth and the, um, the younger members of the church. So harmony itself, um, for me, I think ultimately has run its course. It's something that was, it started in 2013, we're now in 2022. Lots of things have happened, you know, between those, between those times. Um, and I, I think that the actual sort of the name harmony and the, the group itself is no longer is no longer there but ultimately harmony is the same as unity and that's that's where i'm going with this you know we are all united many parts one body um we're all here to do the same thing we're here to worship god and we're here to give him the glory worshiping in unity we're here to worship in unity whether young or old it doesn't matter I think that children are as much a part of the body of Christ as the middle or the older age groups 
Um, we, you know, it's about coming together in unity, worshiping together in unity. I'm just going to read to you Psalm 100. Now, when Harmony first got together, um, the Lord gave me a verse, um, well known, very well known verse, and um, this is what I'm about to read. So this it says in my Bible here, the 7th of November, 2013, for Harmony. Psalm 100. So it says, verse 1, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness, come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. And we are his, we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. I seem to remember that from a minute ago as well. His faithfulness continues through all generations. So that kind of suggests to me all generations is not just me, worship leader, members. Of, it's, it's about including the children, the youth. His faithfulness continues through all generations. So again, this goes back to what Tim was saying, and it fits in exactly with, with what Tim was saying. Um, the unity, you know, and other functions of the church, the youth and the children taking part and feeling, taking part in the church and feeling part of the church. Um, you know, we get told something could work when we've got annual leave left over. They say to us, use it or lose it. You know, if we haven't used it by the end of the year, it's gone. And sometimes I feel like that with the children in our church. We need to we need to utilize them you know there's lots of things when they get to a certain age um they go off to, to universities and, and colleges and things like that's that's a natural course of life you know that happens but i want to encourage them to feel part of the church right now it's like tim said about the relay race fantastic example about passing the baton you know we need the people that are behind to carry on running to carry on encouraging They've still got a part to play, you know. One body, many parts. We all have a role to play. You know, you're there. Encouragement, prayer. You know, if you're someone who can encourage, encourage. If you're someone who can pray, please pray. Pray for the worship team. Pray that God anoints us. Pray that God anoints the youth and the children within the church as well. Now Moses, Moses was on... Mount Sinai, and it says in, in Exodus 1 to, 1 to 3, this is shortly after the Ten Commandments and all the, the laws and the covenants that God had been speaking to Moses about. Um, it says, Come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. You are to worship at a distance, but Moses alone is to approach the Lord. The others must not come near, and the people may not come up with him. When Moses went and told the people all of the Lord's words and laws, they responded in one voice. Everything the Lord has said we will do. And that just, the one thing that struck me out of that, they responded with one voice. That's unity, that's togetherness. And that is what I feel the Lord is telling us. The church needs to be unified. One body, many parts. So I know that this you know, as pastor had been speaking about, this is a year of jubilee. So it's a year of jubilee for, for the Queen. Um, 70 years on the throne, that's absolutely fantastic. You know, a real, real achievement. And, you know, I think we're, we're blessed to have to have a monarch like the Queen that was faithful in her job and just with her life, the way she serves. You know, it's a year of jubilee because we're overcoming COVID. Um, and many other obstacles, whether that be health or financial or whatever it be, this is going to be a year of jubilee. It's a year of jubilee for the church for us to come in back together. You know, I look forward to the time that we can come back together and praise and worship the Lord and listen to God's word face to face in God's house. Ultimately, the church is the people, so you know we can we can praise and worship via live stream or any other way, and you know, God is there; His presence is with us. 
You know, we need everyone praising and worshipping God um, and so just celebrating all that he has done for us. And this is this is something that I just this came to me earlier as I was just preparing, and it's a song, and the, the words to the song say this. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Everything that's in me, praise the Lord. I can praise him on the highest mountain, praise him in the lowest valley. Everything that's in me, praise the Lord. I just think, you know, whatever, whatever state things are for you, wherever you're at in your journey, in your life, I can praise him on the highest mountain. I can praise him in the lowest valley. I think the key is we can praise him wherever we are, however we feel. Everything that's in me, praise the Lord. It says in Psalm, Psalm 22, verse 3, in the King James Version, he said, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. God inhabits the praises of his people. God is present and glorified when his people lift his name in honour, and that's what that's what we, we love to do. We love to sing his praises. We love to glorify the Lord. We love to praise his name. Give him glory. Honour his, honor his name. You know, we've got, as I said, we've got many reasons to praise the Lord. I'm thankful, albeit that I've not been that well recently, but I'm thankful that God blesses me, blesses my family. I thank the Lord for that. And in this year of Jubilee, I believe it's a time now more than ever for, for us as a church to be united together. Encourage each other. Encourage the children and the youth. You know, the children and the youth, they're some of the many wonderful parts that make up the body of Christ. Um, my vision, with God's instruction and counsel, as we read in Psalm 32, verse 8, my vision is to praise God. It's to lead the church, lead the worship team in praises to God. I include the youth, the children, and, in, and get them leading the praises and worship to God unified together one body many parts we all young and old we've all got our part to play everyone's got their part to play god has a role for everyone in the body of christ please don't feel left out you know worship leader that's that's my that's my thing you may be someone as i've already said somebody who just welcomes on the door that's not that, that's a fantastic that's a fantastic calling you may be someone that listens to people. You may be somebody who makes a cup of tea. You may be hospitable. If you're not sure what your calling is and what your part is, ask the Lord, pray what he wants you to do and where he wants you to be within the church. Please pray as well for the, for the worship team. Pray, pray that God will anoint us all. Pray that God will guide us in his ways, instruct us in his ways and lead us, lead us the right way, you know, I just, I just thank the Lord for his blessings. I just pray that he, he will help us just to bring honour and glory to his name. And I'm just going to close with this. I'm going to close how we started. Psalm 107, verse 1, it says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your church. And I just pray that this message will be a blessing, Lord. We, we want to wo worship you in unity, Lord. We want to worship you together, whether we are a child, youth, whether we're a little bit older, Lord. Whatever our part to play is, I pray that you will just help us to be unified in worshipping and honouring your name, Father. I just thank you for your word and the blessing that you, that you are to us every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. It's been a, been a blessing this morning. I look forward to catching you all soon. Thank you.